Well, hi there. Previously, we explained interphase and how a cell prepares to divide. We also explained mitosis, which is one type of division that can occur after interphase. Mitosis is the type of division that results in two cells that are identical in their genetic composition to the original cell. Being able to make identical copies of a cell is very important for both single-celled organisms that can do so to reproduce, and also for multicellular organisms that can do so to reproduce, but also to grow larger. But creating identical cells to reproduce does have one major downside. All of your offspring are virtually just like you. In the future, we will discuss the twofold cost of sex, which shows some of the benefits of reproducing asexually, or all alone, but it also has costs. One of the biggest costs is that by producing offspring just like you, if the environment changes in a way that is bad for you, it's also bad for all of your offspring. For this reason, organisms that produce more variable offspring by combining their DNA with the DNA of another individual, called sexual reproduction, have been very successful over time. But if you're going to combine your DNA with somebody else, you can actually have problems if both of you contribute all of your DNA to your offspring. You, for example, have 23 different types of chromosomes. But for each of those 23 types of chromosomes, you actually got one from your mom and one from your dad. Thus, you have two of each of those 23 types of chromosomes, giving you a total of 46 chromosomes. Having two of each type of chromosome, one from your mom and one from your dad, makes you diploid. Notice that each of your parents only gave you one of each type even though they themselves have two of each type. If each of your parents gave you both of their chromosomes, then you would have four of each chromosome type, 92 total. You would be tetraploid. And your kids, they would have eight of each, 184 total chromosomes, and be octoploid. You would have twice as many copies of each gene as diploid people, and your kids four times as much, and it would continue to double each generation after that. And the number of each gene can matter a lot due to something called dosage. We'll talk more about dosage in the future, but in many cases, having too many copies of a gene can cause organisms to be very different from their parents, and in many cases, can result in death. So, if you're going to combine DNA with somebody else, the truth is that you need to get rid of half of your chromosomes, or your offspring will probably die. So before you can combine chromosomes with another individual to reproduce sexually, you must get rid of one of each pair of chromosomes that you have. The cell that you would produce that has only half of the original number of chromosomes, either the one from mom or the one from dad for each chromosome type, is called a haploid cell. And the process used to make these haploid cells isn't mitosis, which makes identical cells, but a different sort of a division called meiosis. So the difference between mitosis and meiosis is that meiosis gets rid of half of the chromosomes, whereas mitosis does not. If you haven't seen it before, this might be a great time to check out our video on mitosis, which is actually right there, because I will be referencing it quite a bit for the next Few minutes. But as you recall, mitosis separates the identical copies of all 46 of your chromosomes that were produced during interphase so that each new cell gets a single copy of all 46 chromosomes. It does that in a few steps that we can remember using the acronym PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Metaphase is the step where the chromosomes are lined up in a single file line in the middle of the cell so that the idiot microtubules can pull them apart. The whole thing is lining them up, prophase, then they're lined up, metaphase, then they start to be pulled apart, anaphase, they're all the way pulled apart, telophase, then the cell divides, cytokinesis. Meiosis is the same thing, except it has a different goal. Instead of separating the identical copies of the chromosomes, called chromatids, it is separating the pairs of chromosomes, called homologous chromosomes. 
If it were to line them up in a single file line, like in mitosis, then the idiot microtubules would pull apart the sister chromatids and each cell would get a copy of all of the chromosomes. But that isn't the goal. So it can't line up the chromosomes in a single file line. Instead, it lines them up in a double file line where the homologous chromosomes are next to one another. This way, when the idiot microtubules reach out, they get one homolog or the other, but not both like they would in mitosis. In prophase, because prophase is before metaphase, PMAT, the chromosomes will be getting lined up, but they won't be lined up just yet. So at metaphase, instead of a single file line, I have a double file line. In anaphase, it will be the homologous chromosomes that are getting pulled to the sides, not the sister chromatids. Again, the homologous chromosomes each came from a different parent, whereas the sister chromatids are just identical copies of the exact same chromosome made during interphase. If you want to know more about interphase, be sure to watch our video all about it. During telophase, the homologous chromosomes will be all the way to the sides of the cell. And then cytokinesis will divide the cell into two haploid cells, because the number of chromosomes is now half of what it was before. Mission accomplished. But wait, you might have noticed that each of these now haploid cells has two identical copies of the chromosomes that it has left. Because the copies are identical, they don't have any new info. They have still lost half of their chromosomes, but for the remaining half, they have two copies of each one. So instead of making two haploid cells, which they already have, why not make four? All they need to do is separate those sister chromatids. And as it turns out, that is what mitosis does. So after cytokinesis, the cells start lining up the chromosomes in single file lines, just like with mitosis, and separating out the sister chromatids. The only difference between this and mitosis is that the cells are haploid because of what happened in the first division. Because there are two divisions, the first is called meiosis 1, and the second is called meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 has prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1, and is followed by cytokinesis 1. At this point, the cell is haploid, but still has two copies of each remaining chromosome. So they divide again. Meiosis 2 has prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2, and is followed by cytokinesis. Two! At this point, one diploid post-interphase cell has become four haploid cells, like sperm and eggs. And now you know. If you learned something, please be sure to like this video. If you'd like to learn more, please subscribe and check out our other videos. And we hope to see you real soon.